The enemy, the devil, and all his agents are not afraid of you, but of something that you carry. That is your glory. Your glory is what the devil is after. That is what he steals. And he uses people and all his cohorts to do that. Have you ever wondered why after immediately you have gone on a retreat, every spiritual activity such as fasting, prayers, word study, or even immediately after you've become born again, suddenly strange form of temptation follows after. That is designed on purpose. Just to make sure that that glory, that star in you, doesn't have a place to shine. Because nothing scares the devil like you being in your state of glory. So, in this very video, you shall be discovering the ways he uses to steal people's glories, including yours. That is, if you let him through ignorance. But I trust that is not you. But not only are you going to know the ways, you shall know exactly what to do. <clears throat> Jesus' mighty name. Number one way is through bloodline. What do I mean by that? Before you were born, even immediately you were born, the enemy already knows the star you carry. That is why you see when Moses was born, because of the greatness of his star, all children were asked to be killed during his era. The same with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When he was born, Herod sent for all the children below two years old to be annihilated. That is because of the star you carry. So many times there are family members around us when we are born. If there are witches in that particular family or out of hatred, not for another's child to be greater than theirs, that is where a lot of children destinies have been attacked right from the get-go. Remember, there was a boy that was accosted by untold hardship and rejection. And that is because somebody that baited him when he was a child, the sponge was stolen and hidden in a fetish altar. And as a matter of fact, when deliverance was conducted by the help of the Holy Ghost revelation, it was found out that the sponge that was used to bait him when he was a little child was still fresh has been kept fresh all along in order to keep the bewitchment going on all through his life how did that happen close relatives so watch out when you are a child you are naive and so many people you just run to them without knowing who they are, actually. And that's why it's good to pray for your children. And also it's good to protect them from venomous, toxic relatives that could be witches and wizards haunting glories of little babies. The number two way that could happen is through fornication. Now, wait a minute. This is a place where many people will like to log out. But I tell you the truth, if you do that, you are doing it at your own detriment. So, pay attention and listen 
and deliver yourself in the name of Jesus. And God bless you. Fornication is one major way by which the enemy uses to destroy the destinies and the glories of God's people. A very important reading of the scripture for which I would like for you to pay attention very, very, very carefully. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18 to 20, I read, Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication sinned against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Hallelujah. The only sin that is done with the body is fornication. And that includes masturbation. And that is the place where so many young men and women destinies has been stolen. One major way, masturbation. He said you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. In your body, which are God's. So, where is the place where God is being glorified? Your body and my body. And they don't belong to you and I. But the Bible says our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. The reason the enemy is angry over any human is that we have the ability to host the Lord the king of glory, the creator of the whole universe in our bodies, the temple of the Holy Spirit. So he wants to make sure that who brings glory to you and I is not possible to reside in decadence, place that has been defiled, that is our bodies. It's the reason for all agitation to create defilement. There is an important scenario in the book of Ezekiel. The Bible says, when the Lord took Ezekiel by revelation into the temple, he saw so many people conducting all type of abominable practices. Some of them were worshipping the sun. Some were pledging allegiance to Tammuz in the temple of God, including the elders. The end of the story was that at that very incident, the Bible says, and the glory of the Lord left the temple. And above the threshold, there was God seated with the four cherubs and he took off. So God could be forced to evacuate the premises he desires to stay in by fornication, abominable acts. So remember in the Old Testament, the temple was the type and shadow of our own physical body, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So that is very important. Now listen to this very scripture I'm going to read. It will shock you to know the extent by which many destinies had been reduced. Proverbs 6, chapter 26, I read, For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. 27. Can a man take fire in his bosom, and his clothes are not be born? So, through 
word on the bible says a man is reduced to a piece of bread and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life piece of bread imagine the glories of many that is equated or equivalent to a piece of bread so if the enemy is after you is after that precious thing your glory and the moment he gets it that glory is reduced to a piece of bread i pray as you listen to this very video it does something in your spirit and by the help of the holy ghost you overcome this temptation in jesus name as a matter of fact i pray for you if you're struggling with masturbation and fornication father in the name of jesus deliver your daughter deliver your son from such assault of the enemy over their bodies in the name of jesus be free by the blood of jesus be free in the name of jesus amen and amen hallelujah number three coalition of altars through soul ties there is an individual you will sleep with and immediately all hell will break loose that is because some people embody multitude of demons the moment you have any affair with them it is over to secure your life is going to take an intense discipline and prayers strong prayers deliverance prayers to set you free from the altar you have intermingled with some have been worshiping satan all their lives as a matter of fact there was a story once upon a time a man encountered a lady and that lady is from the other world and each time he has an affair with her right there as they are having intercourse he was simply going into the mouth of a python a serpent and each time they took his cement to different places and altars and his life was like hell be careful the boy the girl the man the woman you met out there will be sent from the underworld now more than ever it is highly imperative for one to truly ask the lord for direction before choosing a partner because the end result could be very 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 devastating so ask the lord is this person sent from you like i told you in one of the videos here every human being in one's life is sent from either of two sources either coming from god or coming from the devil but i pray that god will deliver you in the name of jesus the bible says he that is joined with an harlot is one body first corinthians 6 16 what know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body for two said he shall be one flesh so imagine a harlot joining with an harlot has made you two to become one flesh 
And imagine a hallow that has slept with, let's say, 30 people, amongst which you have arm robber, kidnapper, ritualist, homosexual, all types of characters. She has become one flesh with all those people and you have met that same hallowed. So there is an interpolation of diverse characters. That's why you see there are people you sleep with, you end up in an entity. You become a wanderer because the real you has been lost. It's lost completely. As a matter of fact, I once heard of a research conducted, scientific research conducted, how that for each woman that have slept with different men, in her DNA, there has been a change of bits and pieces of each man, such that the original personality will be lost over time. And looking at this scripture, by the time you do your correct calculations by the scriptures, you find out that is a very dangerous thing. So this is a very, very serious matter. So if you're wondering why is your life not moving forward, why are you struggling to a point where you want to accuse God as though God has been unfaithful, stay put. Stay put, keep praying, and keep trusting God. Because here is the thing. The Bible says, Be not deceived. Be ye not deceived. God cannot be mocked. For whatever a man sows, that shall he reap. So once you are born again, God forgives. But there is usually a payment of those things one has committed before the final Total deliverance. It does happen. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, Whosoever the Lord does not chastise is regarded as a bastard. So understand these things. You are born again. True. But trust God to bring you out totally from whatever form of captivity you've been involved. And I pray today as you listen to this very message, that captivity is over today. In the name of Jesus. For the Bible says, surely there is an end. And the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. So God likes it when you are contrite. He says, a broken and a contrite spirit. O oh Lord, thou will not despise. So instead of judging God and saying, oh, you have done this and that. Be patient and hope on the salvation of the Lord. And before you know. There will be a whole new chapter to, for you. There will be a whole new chapter open for you. And I decree today is that day. In Jesus' mighty name, be covered by the blood of Jesus. Be washed by the blood of Jesus and have a new beginning. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, I intercede on behalf of whosoever is watching now. I may have gone through one or two of these situations which is primarily the case in these last days. But Lord, mercy. We say mercy prevail over judgment. We say in the days of ignorance, you overlook. Lord, overlook and have mercy. For you say you have mercy and not sacrifice. Thank you, Lord God, for forgiving your children. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Rejoice. Don't be guilty. Don't allow the enemy to put you into guilt. Use what you've learned to avoid such happenings. By grace, not by power. It's very important that you know it's not by your power. It is by the grace of God. In Jesus' mighty name. Number four way is unhealthy exchange of clothing or shoes, hair gears or whatever either to friends or whoever. Praise God. Now, not everybody may have ulterior motive towards you, 
but for the most part, sometimes there are many individuals whose minds are not pure and they are out there scavengers and hunters of people's glories. And they do that through, through physical materials such as clothing, shoes, etc., etc. Just like it is when the piece of apron was taken from the body of Paul, the apostle, to people and demons you are casted out. Just like there is an exchange of mantle from Elijah to Elisha. Thereby, just having that piece of clothing, something drops off on you from the carrier to the receiver. These are biblical means where there could be transference of power or impartation. The enemy is a counterfeiter. The same way something glorious in you could be taken in a reverse mode. That could be done. That's why you see when people, they go to ritualists or herbalists, you know, operating through dark magic on evil altars. Sometimes they ask for a piece of clothing, hair, or even shoe. I remember once upon a time, the first time God began to visit me, I bought for me a pair of shoes, many shoes, and clothes, clothing materials. And because I love giving and without discretion, I so much gave to so many friends and colleagues, almost virtually all. Immediately after that, it wasn't up to three months that all hell broke loose. I started struggling, struggling to a point that the whole period of that struggle was almost up to five years. That is not to say that I can point a person, but I have observed that to be so. So since then, I have resolved, if I must give, I could, I, I, could, I could take you to a place and buy for you. But if I must give, I have to really trust you. I have to really know you. Or I could give to people I don't even know that don't know me either. Because it's actually good to give. Amen? But we are living in a very wicked world. That you're good. The Bible says time will come that people will call good evil and evil good. So do everything you do with discretion. Discretion. That a thing is good doesn't mean that it's not hated. Or one could not be attacked. So be careful and be vigilant. Praise God. So that is one way also. Demonic personalities could exchange glories or destiny. I remember a story of a wonderful lady of God that somebody told her, Oh, your clothes, each time I wear it, I receive favor. And she goes to pick the clothes, and each time she goes to borrow the clothes and takes it out in order to attract favor. So whose favor is that? That's the question. So you understand? And that lady had been experiencing untold challenges while that one was flying. I decree a total reversal tonight. I decree a total reversal of whosoever is in that situation right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Number five. Careless divulging of information giving out information carelessly to your enemies because what your enemies don't know they usually don't have a clue it's hard for them to know where to attack you from so usually you see in the state of warfare when the insider that gives information to the enemy, usually it is difficult to avert whatever attack or assault they could be 
receiving because someone can spill out the secret so be careful what you say where you say it and how you say it and to whom you say it because not everyone out there is happy for your success the moment you understand that is going to help you channel your activity in the right direction because ultimately we are here on a pilgrimage and we are all here on an errand and we we'll all stand before our God in heaven to give account of the assignment he has given to you and I but I pray our mouth will not lead us into trouble because the Bible says the tongue is a wall of fire. Amen. It can put a whole nation at place. Most of the greatest war we've experienced in history are through words. And also when peace is coming, it's coming through words. A good speaker, someone like Winston Churchill, such men of eloquence and grace when they speak there is pacification so the bible says the power of life and death lies in the tongue so choose life the bible advice so as you go about your fear direct your tongue with discretion by the holy ghost but eventually you run your mouth like a tap. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Father, deliver that your daughter and your son from every information they have given out to their enemies that have been the reason why they are struggling. In Jesus' mighty name. Not everyone you should share your dream with, no matter how positive. You know, that was what uh, Joseph did. He went ahead and shared his dream. Not that God couldn't have brought him to the fruition of that dream, fulfillment of that prophecy, but it attracted so much enmity. The Bible says whatever was written aforetime was written for our learning, so that us through the comfort and the patience of the scriptures, we might have hope. So pay attention to that, and I know God is coming through for you. In Jesus' mighty name. So if you've gained anything of value from this video and you're not a subscriber, please consider doing so. And the Lord shall bless you richly. And please also share this video with someone. I believe it's going to bless someone. So I'll come your way again. This video is going to bless you. Shalom.